2025 star tight end Eric Gilbert took a visit to Oklahoma, and we're going to talk about it. And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we're going to talk about 2025 star tight end Eric Gilbert. Now, for those of you that are members at OUinsider.com, my man Brandon Drum has the particulars on how the visit went who he met with, what they talked about, and his overall feelings about the visit. I encourage you to go check out the VIP board for those details. But I am going to tell you, look, in Eric Gilbert, you get, again, five-star tight end. For those of you that don't recognize the significance of that, Austin Stogner was not a five-star tight end. He was the best tight end in the 2019 class but he did not get the five-star status. That is how difficult it is to earn five-star status as a tight end. You usually don't get the number of pass catches that you need. You don't get the number of targets that you need. You don't get the touchdowns that you need. A lot of this is based on what you do when you can get the ball in your hands, but also at camps, how you look against other linebackers, safeties that you're going up against, and what you look like in comparison to tight end. Now, Eric Gilbert is that dude. Now, Chris Ball has him headed to Georgia. He's from the Peach State. We understand that. But also, if you look at Eric Gilbert, and you look at the kind of offense that Lincoln Riley wants to run, you look at how significant that wide receiver is, that that real good tight end position, Grant Alcatara, Lee Morris, you can see Eric Gilbert would fit right in. And what you have to sell to him is what you don't necessarily have at a whole lot of other places, which is the John Mackey Award winner in Mark Andrews. Say, look, man, this is what happens when we're able to get a guy like you involved in the scheme to the way that Lincoln Riley likes to get his tight ends involved. You're just a matchup nightmare everywhere you are. Linebacker, safety, doesn't matter. That dude's probably going to be open. It's all about can you come down with the rock, can you hold on to the ball. Grant Calcaterra had a few issues with that in the season, came back, still looked very good. We all know what kind of a guy Lee Morris turned into as a walk-on. Imagine if you got the five-star to sign up the year after Austin Stogner signs up. All of a sudden, you are stacked at one of the most critical and awesome mismatches in football. Your tight end in Lincoln Riley's pro raid, the guy that can block and can go out and routes, is just uncanny. It's why he is a five-star. It's also why he's being so heavily pursued. And I think the win is getting that guy onto campus. And getting him on the campus in the way that he was on campus. And getting him feeling pretty good about it. That cannot be overstated. Plus, you got Shane Beamer, who obviously has ties to the state. Coached at Georgia for a while. All up and down the eastern seaboard. This guy also brought in Braden Willis. He was responsible for, for Joseph Wette. The guys that he's able to work with usually end up being pretty good. And you've seen what kind of impact he had on special teams. Now, I don't necessarily know that Eric Gilbert only wants to play tight end. I, I think that that's where he's leaning toward. I think he's also pretty good defensive end. I also think that he knows where the money is. The money is in playing tight end. You want to play at the next level, you play tight end, you can play very well. Ah, I take that back. If you're a pass rusher and you're an outstanding pass rusher, you'll make more than a tight end. Yeah, you just will. I think Demarcus Lawrence is more valuable than Jason Witten. Fight me. I also would go as far as to say there's a bunch of guys that are more valuable than Zach Ertz that are pass rushers. J.J. Watt being one of them. Aaron Donald, that defensive tackle position, not really pass rusher, but you get the point that I'm making there. Also, Khalil Mack. You see what kind of money he's getting paid. So, yeah, I think if you are an outstanding tight end, you can still do very well. If you're a great defensive end, you'll probably do better. Point is, he's a five-star tight end, and I think that's where he would fit at Oklahoma. I don't think he's going to play on the defensive side of the ball. I think that's the dude that you want lining up in the slot where you have safeties going, oh, my God, he's humongous at six five and a half and pushing 250 already coming out of high school. He's ready made to play right away, and I think that's going to factor into his decision as well. Does he have the best opportunity to play as a true freshman? And y'all need to get over this whole go into a situation and battle for a job. That ain't how kids think. That ain't how their parents think. They think, am I going to have an opportunity to play and play often? Play early and play often. Everybody wants to. Not everybody's capable. Some kids are going to have a better opportunity than others to go out there and get it done. And in this age of urgency, 
where everybody wants to play and the transfer portal exists, really interested to see which kids actually accelerate that process or go looking to play somewhere else. Either way, Oklahoma and Eric Gilbert would be an outstanding fit. It's all about can you out-recruit Georgia, can you out-recruit Alabama, and can you land a guy who has been able to earn five star at a position where you really just don't see five stars. All right, that's it for me. That was